Joining us now from Mountain View, California, is Lan He Chen, research fellow at the Hoover Institution, also a Stanford professor and the former policy director of Mitt Romney's 2012 presidential campaign. So, Lan He, do a lot? Do the Republicans have a lot to celebrate? Well, I think, Betty, it's a significant accomplishment. Look, I think they've been looking for a big legislative accomplishment all year. This particular piece of legislation is significant. It makes some of the biggest uh, changes to the U.S. tax code since 1986. It's not as much of a tax reform bill as a tax cut bill. Right. Uh, but it is a significant piece of legislation, and I think that, indeed, they should be celebrating because this uh, was not a fait accompli. This was not one of those things that was destined to happen. They really did have to to work to get this across the finish line. No, I mean, in fact, uh, if you had said any, tell, told anybody six months ago this was going to pass by the end of the year, I think there'd be a lot of, you know, are you kidding me type of phrases uh, being passed around. Uh, however, are we just kicking the can down the road, though, Lanhi? I mean, look, this is going to increase the deficit by one and a half trillion dollars. We're going to have to pay for this somehow. Yeah, there's no question that there has to be some kind of reform on the spending side of the ledger. Uh, we've always known, at least those of us who've looked at the system know, that the U.S. does have a spending problem, and that spending problem predominantly is around the so-called entitlement programs, like Medicare, like Medicaid, the health care program for low-income Americans, and Social Security. And so the question now becomes, uh, where does the action go there? As you mentioned earlier, as your reporter mentioned earlier, Speaker Ryan is interested in approaching those issues next year, but there's not a huge political appetite, even amongst President Trump, to go after those programs. So we'll have to see where that goes. This question of what the impact of the tax bill is going to be, we're going to have to see how much of this deficit implication is negated by economic growth. I think that's been a source of huge debate here in the United States. And Lahi, Speaker Ryan also saying that, you know, he has made some compromises just to get this tax reform through. I mean, they settled with temporary individual tax relief in order to kind of offset these deep corporate tax cuts. Can we just assume that these sunsets will be extended under a future Congress? I mean, track record suggests that it's not that easy of a, of a task. Yeah, that, that's correct. I think there's nothing that U.S. politicians love doing more than cutting taxes. I mean, if you really get to the heart of the matter, one of the reasons why this was easier than Obamacare repeal was earlier in the year is because, quite frankly, tax cuts are things that even Democrats largely will want to vote for. And so what this bill does is to make the tax cuts essentially temporary. So in 2025, they're going to have to revisit the question of whether the tax rates stay where they are as cut by the law or whether they go up to pre-law rates. And so I tend to think uh, that these members of Congress in a future Congress are not going to be able to resist keeping those rates low unless there is some significant fiscal pressure to do otherwise. And, and polls still suggest, Lanhi, that this is a very unpopular tax overhaul. I mean, for the middle class, are they really going to feel it? Well, I, I think in 2018 in particular, you know, a lot of the benefits of this tax law are front loaded. So if you look on the corporate tax cut, the immediate statutory rate cut to 21 percent makes the United States more competitive with the rest of the industrialized world. Immediate expensing is going to move forward a lot of capital expenditure. So we are going to see some impacts on growth in 2018, and that potentially could translate to higher wages. Yeah. On the individual income tax side, there is some pretty immediate relief. And even the liberal Brookings Institution here in the United States concluded that about 81 percent of taxpayers are going to see relief under this bill, many of them in the middle class. So I do think you're going to see a lot more short-term benefit for Republicans, the long-term picture is much fuzzier. Okay, uh, Lani, there are just some headlines coming across from Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell saying that this bill probably won't get any Democratic votes when it comes down to the final tax bill. Also noting, we've been talking about this, the government shutdown, saying the government shutdown is, quote, not going to happen. Certainly still a big question mark there. But, but Lani, on that first point, though, the fact that this was so bipartisan, the fact that no Democrats uh, you know, supported this bill, uh, how is that going to affect uh, future legislative bills that come on uh, uh, that come on board. Yeah, the challenge here uh, is that there is an inverse relationship between the level of durability of a bill 
and, and how much or little uh, support there is from both parties. So in this situation, because it was supported basically only by Republicans, it makes it subject to change in the future. So if, for example, President Trump gets voted out of office in 2020 and there's a Democratic Congress, it's possible we could see dramatic changes to tax law in the other direction. It's the same thing, the same cycle we're in with health care in the United States, where Obamacare has been subject to opposition from Republicans because it was passed without any Republican support. This is a dangerous policymaking cycle for us to be in, but it's where we are. And unfortunately, we're going to have to see what happens if, in fact, a Democratic majority takes over a few years from now.